The next episode of the commercial break starts now. Yes, ma'am. It's another episode of the commercial break. I'm Brian Green. This is my dear friend, Kristen Hoadley. Best to you, Chrissy. Best to you, Brian. Best. I almost just said Happy New Year. Uh, I told you. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I gotta tell my daughter. No, 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 no. And she'll, she'll go like this back to me. She'll, she'll finger wag back to me. If I tell her no, she'll finger wag. Mm-hmm. And if, if I tell my son no, he just does whatever the hell yeah, he pleases. Yeah. But he's a three-nager, and that's what we got to deal with. The best to you out there in the podcast yeah. universe. Thanks for joining us on yet another episode of this, The Commercial Break. The only one you'll ever need, in case you're wondering. That's it. Don't worry about those other commercial breaks. Especially not the vlog. This is not the, the commercial, commercial break you're looking to for. Yeah, the vlog. <laughs> that, that never seen the light of day until I decided to make it see the light of day. How bad. How bad was that? That was just We both bad. made fun of our younger selves. Yeah, I mean, listen, we all make mistakes. <laughs> We're going to look back on this in 10 years and go, well, that's a fucking train wreck. <laughs> We probably should have gotten jobs. <laughs> hey, we're living in the yeah. moment. Uh, yes, Your Honor, in bankruptcy court. <laughs> I was trying my best. <laughs> Look at what it could have been. It could have been much worse, Your Honor. It could have been much worse. Uh, so a lot of stuff to get to today. Let's jump right into it. I... You know, we just got back from having a little uh, break, and so when I was on vacation, I didn't have access to my normal viewing activities, oh, I, because no I will TLC? say this about the Disney cruises. No TLC, no Discovery, no nothing. Okay. We'll say this about the Disney cruises. I have been on the much bigger cruise ships, and yeah. the internet was as if you were at your house. Mm-hmm. You could make phone calls, you could internet it, no problem. You could download, stream, do whatever you want. The Disney cruise had miserable fucking internet. It, you couldn't even get on a website. That's it took for like a reason. Thirty minutes. They left. want of course. you to be out and about. No, they want you to buy their, their internet the, program. Oh, right. That's okay, what they want. Well, they block you your phones. They have okay. a phone blocker mm-hmm. because we're not that far off the coast. Right. Like I mean, it's you can like pick the up Bahama area. Yeah, right? you can pick up cell phones in Miami yeah. until you're probably thirty or forty miles away. I would imagine. I'm not a technologist, but I imagine that's how it goes. Yeah, no. They block your fucking cell phone, and then they tell you you got to buy, you know, uh-huh. 300 megs for thirty dollars. You know what 300 megs is? It's like one <laughs> really good selfie, is what that is. Right. And so you're someone sends you a text message with a fucking picture in it, and you're fucked. You just spent thirty dollars. Uh, no. <laughs> anyway, anywho, I didn't have any, but that's okay. I wasn't there to watch TLC. Sure. I had to do plenty of that here in the studio. Yeah. When you I had got, withdrawals just a little bit. Little back. Little bit. Little bit. Little tad okay. t- 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 teeny 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 teeny. But when I got back, I was inundated with uh, news and television that I had not yet had an opportunity yeah. to watch. I turned on my, you know, my go-to TLC Discovery app. First of all, are you are not watching the new 90 Day the other way? No, but I, there is one that I, that's on Netflix that's the follow-up to Love is Blind. I saw that, but we didn't like it. We watched one episode, and we didn't we The first into episode, it. I was kind of like, eh, but yeah. I'm going to give it a shot. I thought it's something that we could discuss. Okay. I I'll, mean, because the, I'll the keep premise going of it is pretty it's crazy. It's fucking whack. And I told Astrid, <laughs> here's the premise crazy. of it. I won't give away anything about the first episode, but here's the premise <laughs> is that five or six couples... It's the same host. The same host, the Vanessa Lachey's. and Lachey. And the the premise is, is that five or six couples that are on the verge of either break, it's like they're giving them an ultimatum. Either we're breaking up or we're getting married. Or yes. One of the two. And so and it th- could be the girl or the guy that's giving the ultimatum. Yeah. And so they discuss all that on the first episode. And then for three weeks, you pick another partner. Yes. So there's 12 people. To try out. You pick another partner <laughs> and you try them out. And you decide if you really want to be with the first partner, which is absolutely <laughs> fucking wackadoodle. It, it makes no sense. This, this, there's no real life application for this. This is just a drama. This is just a shit stirring show, which I get it. That's what Netflix needs to do in order to drive ratings. I don't hear the same kind of scuttlebutt about this as we did about Love yeah. is Blind in yeah. either season. But I watched the first episode and it's just so unbelievable to me that I can't get into it. And here's what I told Astrid when we watched, like within three minutes of the show. I said, not one of these couples is not already broken up. They're already broken up. Probably. And they're coming on here as like a last ditch effort yeah. or because they want some fame. Because you do not send the one, this person that you're ready to get married to into a home to live with some hot fucking stud <laughs> for the next three weeks and see if, you know, his well, dick happens the, to make it into your vagina. I already see some jealousy happening. Oh, of course. You know, the, the one girl came over and sat down right at the table that the new girl and guy were talking. Yeah. I read so. somewhere, uh, you know, I listen. Well, I again, won't watch it. I, there's plenty of content I can focus on. There are 
I just want to give this. I want to give this disclaimer again. There are lots of shows and programs that you can go to to get fucking facts. This is not one of them. Do not take anything that we say here with any degree of seriousness because we do yeah. not know what we're talking about. We're two friends, as if we were sitting at a bar shooting the shit, and one of us really doesn't know it. Really doesn't know what facts are, and that's me. So let me explain. I read somewhere. That, so let me explain. Similar, yeah. similar to what do you call the place where the captain of the boats sits? <laughs> Uh, starboard. Said that. Starboard. starboard. I think that's the right side of the ship. <laughs> uh, so the cockpit. The cockpit. Yeah, that's not it either. That's a plane. Uh, I read somewhere the galley. The, the galley is the uh, is know, is the front saying. of the, is like the place where you walk in. I don't. I don't know. I can't. Now I can't even. Still can't remember. It's the. Uh, I don't know what it's called. The thing. The place where the people are. Uh, you know. It's yeah. in the. At the helm. They're at the helm. They're at the helm. Of but the I don't ship. think that's what you call it either. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, yeah. I read that non-monogamous relationships are becoming like oh, consensual yeah. non-monogamy is becoming very popular with yes. the younger generation. Yes, it is. I don't. I'm not one who believes that you should be monogamous for the rest of your life if you don't want to. Yeah. You should do whatever the fuck makes you feel good, mm-hmm. right? If that your truth, if you're if where you live in your own head in your space is that I don't want to be stuck with one person for the rest of my life or yeah. at any time in my life, right? God bless you. But I see this turning out really badly. I see this turning <laughs> it, it, out really badly. It badly. takes two really strong, strong people, people yeah. to have a lot of like therapy and working through that yeah. to I see a lot allow of, that. A lot of rage happen. happening yes. in these, in these yeah. younger kids. Yeah. And I don't know, but any relationship that I've been uh, <laughs> akin to, like that I've seen in my own life where they decide they're going to do consensual non-monogamy yeah. it's just another word for our relationship isn't working let's try something really fucking drastic and it never worked mm-hmm. never not once now once have i seen it work out and i can <laughs> you and i could probably name 10 people right now and you would know who they were yeah you already know who they are yeah. okay so i get back from the cruise and then i got a whole thing of to watch and one of the things that pops up on there is a documentary series on Discovery, three-part documentary series on something called the Hillsong mm-hmm. Church, which I've been watching this story for years. Yeah, it's been unfolding for years. The Hillsong Church, let me give you a little brief, I'll give an explanation, right? Okay. And I and I actually wrote some things down so I so don't you, get them wrong, you know right? Fact. Yeah, because I know that some people uh, who are listening who have ever been to the Hillsong Church might be upset if I get it wrong, so I won't get it wrong. The Hillsong Church is a breakaway church from a Pentecostal type, like evangelical Christian church based in Australia. Australia. I yeah. thought that was okay. okay I would have gotten that right. Guy, yeah, you did. Guy <laughs> comes from have. New Zealand named Houston and him and his son, Brian Houston, mm-hmm. uh, they start this, you know, evangelical church in Australia. Then Brian breaks off and starts another church that eventually ends up becoming the name Hillsong church okay. named Hillsong because of the band that was playing at the church was called Hillsong, okay. right? Okay. So Brian's, his father has this very traditional. They should have called it 33 penis. They should have called it 33 <laughs> penis church. The 30, I'm the 33 <laughs> P pastor. <laughs> Son, is that up? If they'd only known about your if they'd band. they'd only known about us, then, mm-hmm. the, then Hillsong would have, they'd still be going strong to this day. But they're not. And I'll tell you why. Brian breaks off. He starts this more younger version of the church, like hip, like relaxed, not so Pentecostal, not so brimstone and fire. And he realizes something. He realizes that the music that's being played at the church, which is a little bit more forward thinking Mm -hmm. than most of, yeah, like repeating all of the same old hymns Mm -hmm. and maybe putting a little razzle dazzle on it is not what everybody's into. What they're into are these big ballad swooping songs that are very popular at the time, 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Brian catches on to this and he goes, or the people at Hillsong catch on to this and they say, there's a formula, right? It's the music that is doing Drawing something. people in. And I'll tell you what <clears throat> it is. Music is scientifically able to change your emotion mm-hmm. based on certain it. chord progressions. There's a whole thing called music theory that lots of people study in college where you can actually manipulate how someone feels if given the right circumstances based on chord progressions. It makes sense whenever I'm in a certain mood. If I kind of want to change yeah. it, I listen to music. Yeah. And, and if you mm-hmm. listen to an upbeat, happy yeah. chord progression, major chord progressions, then you're going to feel good. If you listen to major minor chord progressions and they swoop, they like it, it, it goes from mm-hmm. soft to loud, you're going to feel 
Oh, it could be a religious experience. It could be considered a religious okay. experience. You're getting chills. Okay. Yeah. You know, think of Celine Dion singing yes. some like huge, hitting some huge high note in a minor key after a major. Like you know, you go oh, right. you know, or Adele, yep. Whitney Houston. All of us who've been to a concert can probably experience. It can probably um, describe a religious type experience at a concert because music does that to us. Yes. And I do believe there is some God in music. Like there's oh, some yeah. universe, you know, computer in the sky, whatever spirit, whatever the fuck you want to call it, <laughs> that music is a communication tool that we don't quite it's understand been used yet. through the ages. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Kids can learn how to read faster if there's mm-hmm. music set to it. There's a whole thing, right? It's a thing. Something goes on with music and it really hits us at our core. It does. It's a communication tool that we don't quite understand all the power of. But what what people who are in the know have been doing for many years, and especially preachers, is they, like, if you go to a Benny Hinn, you know who Benny Hinn is? No. Okay, Benny Hinn is this, like, huge t- uh, evangelical preacher on TV, and okay. he's the guy who will, like, hit you on the head and then tell you you're cured of MS or some bullshit. Right. Stuff that's never been true, right? It's all bullshit. It's fake. It's a big show. But he puts on this big show, big lights, big show, and what he does is he starts the music the second you walk in the door, and he swoops to a crescendo an hour later. Yes. You have been manipulated. Your mind is in a totally different headspace, and you think this stuff is happening, (laughs) and it's because of God when, when maybe, right, but probably the more realistic answer is that it has been designed to To do do so. Yeah. Hillsong catches on to Uh this. And they start doing this with regularity and super effectively. Now, I'm about to do something that I'm not going to put this on YouTube, but I'm about to do something that I have never done at the commercial break. And that is I am going to play a song because I want to play this song. Okay. And I want you to hear this song. (laughs) This is Oceans by the Hillsong Band. There's a girl who's singing this. She's got a very incredible voice, but... This is I, I want this is a live version of this. All of their live songs are seven to twelve minutes long. They all start out very hypnotically and then they move into this crazy, you know, callback, you know, I, I sing a verse, you sing a verse, mm-hmm. I sing a verse, you sing a verse back to the audience. And listen to this song and tell me that if you listen to this for like fifteen minutes straight, you wouldn't feel some kind of emotion either. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ready? Let's play this. This is called Oceans I Walk by the Side or some shit. And this is just as good as any popular music that's out there today. Starting slow. Of course. It's, and, and listen, and look, it's eight minutes long. Come on, sing it. Come on, sing it. <laughs> Tonight's your prayer. Sing your prayer to me. <laughs> Feel it in your bones. Look at my body. <laughs> This chord progression is known as major minor chord progression, okay. I think, right? <laughs> and so what it's doing is it's hitting on a note that sounds happy and familiar, and then it's moving down to a note that sounds more dramatic uh-huh. and sad. Look how many people are there. There's 10,000 fucking people in this video. You got to see this video, but I'm not going to put out, but you got to see it because YouTube will just demonetize it anyway. Okay, now I'm going to fast forward. Get it? Okay, right? I get it. Now yeah. this builds for another... Right, they've got the drums yeah. coming in, the xylophones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a whole orchestral thing, yeah. right? Now I'm going to fast forward about three minutes in the song. And they've got some hypnotic looking stuff going on in the yeah. back, too. Okay. <laughs> now listen, this here's the callback and response. Uh-huh. They sing this over and over again. Oh, Sorry. Is coming in. It's getting louder. It's getting faster. Look at these people. They are hypnotized. They are. This crescendos into some craziness. Boom. Yes. Boom. Just like your favorite song would do, right? Yeah. And they do it again, over and over again. Crescendo, crescendo, crescendo. Louder and louder, faster and faster, more more instruments. <laughs> you are totally mesmerized and right, hypnotized. Right, you're in it. Right. And it's hip and it's cool. And it's not the same things that your parents were singing. It is something completely different, yeah. right? This is not the hymns of the church. This is modern music. Mm-hmm. This is Adele. This is Whitney Houston. This is whoever. 
Yeah. So they get these fucking young kids wrapped up in this craziness. Brian Houston starts this, and it starts out small. He puts it in the middle of a major metropolitan city in Australia, and he starts treating it almost like a nightclub. It's an event. Ah, right, yeah. Church starts you. at 7.30 p.m. It goes till midnight. You got a... You, there's a red carpet that you're walking. Like, it's an wow. event. It's a concert. Multi-million dollar stage productions. It's mainly music with a with a charismatic preacher. And so he breaks out and decides he's a, he's he starts a college. Like, this church starts to get huge. People wow. are going fucking bananas. Do you know how many play? You know how many plays that one video that I just showed you no. has? 486 million wow. plays on YouTube. There's over a million likes on that video. That's insane. The yeah. amount of money they're generating just from one video yeah. is insane. So now Brian decides he's going to open up a church in the United States in downtown New York. Yeah. And instead of getting a church space, he gets a live music venue. And that's where he puts the church, the church. every Sunday at 730. Uh-huh. And he gets this charismatic preacher named Carl Lentz. Carl Lentz is the guy that we've seen with Justin Bieber, yeah. Kendall Jenner. All these celebrities, young, super smoking hot guy, dresses to the nines. Right. And beautiful wife ah. and kids, the perfect, yeah, hip, cool. Hip, cool. He cusses a little, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, he, he cusses. Yeah. He'll tell you, you know, don't let God fucking get away from, you know, yeah. and people are like, oh, he's, he's us. He's yeah. like us. Yeah. People in New York go crazy about this. Oh, yeah, they have. Because they know that any place that there's a line for hundred with 150 people waiting to get in is the place they want to be. And Justin Bieber. And Justin Bieber. <laughs> that's right. And it starts getting almost, this guy has more fame than anybody in this particular like preacher circle, right? Yeah. He starts getting secret service like security. People come in <laughs> oh and they'll do like God. a sweep of the facilities before he shows up. He's talking in front of 25,000 people. The music's playing. People are going crazy. Yeah. They've got VIP sections. They start bringing like, they'll have 35 named celebrities in the front row and you know all the the pleons have to sit in the back mm -hmm. it's a whole thing they're selling records they're having a donation box that's getting folded a fucking gullet and carl paying lentz no taxes paying no taxes <laughs> and and buying property all over the world and carl lentz is the superstar of this show brian houston's doing his thing in australia but it's really carl lentz in america mm -hmm. who is just having a fucking grand old time right you want to hear a little bit of carl you want mm -hmm. to hear him talk a little bit? Sure. Okay, let's look at this guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, handsome dude. I mean, that dude is like, he's Blood like the red. sting of preachers. He is the sting, <laughs> of, preachers. The sting of preachers. He preacher. even has the lower cut tank top. Oh, yeah. I mm -hmm. want to have sex with this guy. <laughs> I'm just sharing that information out loud. A red leather jacket. Dating advice. You ready for this? Find somebody who is occupying their street, not watching you occupy yours. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> Holler back at a player if you see him in the street. <laughs> what? I, I'm just 100% convinced about whatever he said. I don't know, but I'm convinced. But holler he's, back. Yeah, he's hot. He's he's cool. He's hip. He's got a little bit of attitude in his voice. You yeah. hear that voice like the kids talk. Holler back at a player if you see him on the street. You see my Yeezys? That's $75 million. I got him. Yeezy gave him to me. Flew him to me on a private jet. This guy is like a rock star amongst rock stars. He is. One of the things he's really known for is giving a lot of dating advice, like oh, sex okay. advice. <laughs> and it's all about purity, 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 purity. He shames people who have sex before marriage. I can guess marriage. where this goes. You see where this is going? <laughs> it's where it goes every fucking time. Every time. And that is whatever someone's talking about, they're not doing, they're doing <laughs> themselves. Exactly. It's like thou does protest too much. And Carl was doing a little bit. Too much protesting about his 33 PP, if you know what I mean. <laughs> he was saying purity, purity, purity. Let's listen to his dating occupy. advice. Find somebody who's occupying their street, not somebody watching you occupy yours. I have a belief with my daughters. My daughters are like, Dad, when is it going to be a good time to date? I'm like, never, girl. You're going to live here until you're 70. Um, Why? Because I am also <laughs> sleeping with a lot of young women. Your friends. I do not want to run into you at the club <laughs> right. and hit on you on accident. <laughs> Right. Carl is on fire. This is when he's a little bit younger too. He had at one point he had like the long, you know, longer hair and he had man bun. But I think dating for the most part. Oops, sorry. Oh, he did man bun. I think so. Yeah. Do something about it. That's the first thing. So if you're occupying your street and you're doing great things, if you're in high school, for instance, I don't know who you're dating and what you're doing because that guy you're dating, he ain't got no job. 
He has nothing to offer you just yet. I think it's a good Damn. idea to occupy your Yeah, dude. He's like what? super strict about dating. He's like, he he would publicly. Well, just because the guys don't have a job. Well, what are you saying? To go get a sugar daddy? Yeah. I mean, first of all, second of all, you're in high school. What do you want me to do? I got to like pass my classes. Unless you're going to be like Brian and work at McDonald's 40 hours a week while you're going to high school. There's a famous picture of this guy. And the famous picture is him and Justin Bieber. I don't have the picture. The famous picture is him and Justin Bieber. Like walking. Yeah, they had just played basketball or something. They're yeah. walking. And both of them have their shirt off. Well, Justin has like an open shirt, and he has his shirt completely off. Carl Lentz does. <laughs> and his pants are are right in that like man runway. You know what I'm talking about? Those two little muscles that go down yes. there that are pointing in the direction of your flaccid cock. You know what I'm saying? It's like a... It's like a little, it's a street the v, sign. The V, the V. Yeah, the V. It's a mm-hmm. neon V just pointing directly to the happy zone. And just, Justin looks like a fucking schleb next to Carl Lentz. <laughs> Justin looks like your fat old dad on the beach when you were embarrassed that he was still wearing socks on the beach when he's next to Carl Lentz, who looks like a man god. I no, mean, the yeah. guy is like Jesus Christ reincarnate. And the thing about Carl Lentz is... Why, as a preacher, would you ever be walking around the streets of downtown New York with your, you know, vocational V hanging out? You just don't do that. You just don't do that. Not, it's not V for victory. It's V for <laughs> vaginas go here. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. You, you get right. where I'm going yeah, with this? Course, like, why else course. would you be? Sh- and you yeah. know there's paparazzi going to take pictures uh, oh, of yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's the reason he was looking like that. This is... A story that has been told so many times is not even funny. Now, I watched this documentary knowing some other things about Hillsong that I think are much more serious than Carl Lentz being a douchebag, right? Well, didn't it just come out, though, that he was very, I mean, he and his wife are getting divorced. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, so, he was see, cheating. and It turns out that Carl Lentz happened to be sleeping with a couple different people while he was talking about purity and all this mm-hmm. other bullshit. Fame and got to his head. Fame got to his head. He, you know, and at first I was like, well, who really fucking cares? Okay, the guy cheated on his wife. Like, I mean, people cheat on their wives all the time. And he got fired in this big public firing yeah. and Brian Houston, like, you know, distanced himself, distanced himself yeah. and said, listen, there, there'd been some red flags for a while and I, you know, I don't want to get into it, but basically this is the camel that broke the, broke the, the whatever. The, the straw camel, that broke the camel. The camel that back. broke the straws back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how it goes here at the commercial break, just twisting words. And so... But my initial thought was that seems awful fucking dramatic for like a relatively common offense, right? Maybe they could have spun it like, you know, Carl's going to go away for a little while. He's going to get redeemed. Him and Tiger are going to go to, you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> vagina addiction <laughs> classes sex and we'll see you in a yeah, sex rehab, you know, the bullshit that they uh-huh. say they're doing. And then he'll come back and he'll continue to sleep with people. Just keep it more on the down low right. this time. <laughs> but that's not what happened. It was like a big fucking blow up. And Carl himself said, I did wrong. You know, I, I'm stepping away, whatever. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he continued to like really creepily pursue some of these women on the backside. Like when oh. he said he on had their backside. Uh, well, that's exactly what he was <laughs> thinking about. Yeah. He would send them like three minute long videos where he'd be like, hey, girl, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking about you be in the car. I'm like, Hey, girl, I'm just thinking about you. Me and the Lord were rolling down the highway. I got my vocational V hanging out, you know what I'm talking about. I just got back from, you know, doing a little work out at Beeb's house. I was showing him how he gets his vocational V back. So, you know, you know, Beeb's getting a little flabby. So uh, I was thinking about you and I I just want to know if it's okay to think about you. If it's okay to think about you, let me know. That's He was saying things like that, right? Real creepy. (laughs) And he's like, and if it's okay, I'll stop by your house every once in a while. You know, knock on the door, surprise kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like real creepy, (laughs) creepy bullshit. He did a really good impression. (laughs) Thank you, holy. It's me, Carl Lentz. Hey, what's up, girl? It's me, Carl. (laughs) Shit, me and the Lord just rolling down the street, my 5-0, you know what I'm talking about? Listen, I was thinking about you. I got my, <laughs> I got my little Lord here. <laughs> I got my my walking staff, and we're going through the desert, forty days, forty nights. You know, I got a little trouble for you know sending those pictures out. Reply all. You know, I'm talking about girl. So, Beeb's writing a song for you. I'm gonna send it to you a little bit later. But you don't mind if I stop by your house, your work, your parents' house, do you? <laughs> gonna check out see what's going on i'm gonna bring some security over we're gonna lock you down lock it down like we did last night you know talking about girl 
uh, do me a favor. Uh, don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put it on video and send it to you. But don't tell anybody about it. Right, You're not don't talking share about it. it. Yeah, I might get in a little trouble. I'm married. I don't know if I told you that. But don't worry about it. I'm with the Lord. The Lord walks with me. I'm walking with the Lord, my Savior. Remember that song, that girl, that, that girl singing Oceans, 435 million billion views? I wrote that for you, girl. <laughs> girl. Girl. It's me, Carl. <laughs> it's, it's, it's big lens and little lens. <laughs> it's big Carl and little Carl just here shouting out to you, girl. I got, my, I got my Yeezys. I got my Chanel scarf wrapped around my vocational V. You know what I'm talking about, girl. B is for victory. Uh huh. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Listen, do me a favor. Don't post this one on Instagram like you did last time. Appreciate it, girl. You know the NDA I had you sign? Don't worry about it, girl. I'll rip it up. I'm going to leave my wife here in a couple months. <laughs> run away and get married with. Uh, okay, so that's all for now, I guess. You know, I'm just trying to chill. I'm just like, so if it's okay that I call you, you let me know. You call me, you tell me that it's okay to call you when I'm thinking about you. But, don't, you know, because I just, I'm hurting. The Lord has a big hole in my soul right now. And uh, I got to fill my tummy. <laughs> I got to fill my tummy with that girl oh love, you know God. what I'm talking about. It's, you know, it's hard for me to preach on a full dick. <laughs> oh, my God, I just almost spit my <laughs> That was a good Carl performance. Thanks. I appreciate it, girl. I got to go. I'll talk to you later. It's me, Mr. Carl. I'll talk to you later. Uh, so um, Carl has a big blow up at the whole church. And you know how it goes. It's, yeah. um, it's a whole to do, right? But that is not the worst of the offenses. So now this is a couple, this is like a year ago. Yeah, that this happens in. But the what is really going on behind the scenes is that Frank Houston, I think his name is Frank Houston, Frank Houston, who is Brian Houston's father, who originally brought the church to Australia from New Zealand. OK, was actually having sex with young boys uh, oh. in the original church. And Brian Houston Yikes. covered it up for uh -huh. years and years and years. Like they found out about it. It became a thing, but essentially it just slapped him on the wrist and told him to, you know, go away. Don't come back to the church and please don't be in any other positions that mm -hmm. may put you in front of children. Well, of course, <laughs> of course, that didn't. Ha yeah. 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 He, he didn't listen. And nor did Brian Houston try and stop him. Right. Now, you know, that's a complicated relationship. I understand son and father and all that whole bullshit. But recently, like this week, all of the sudden, some of these Hillsong churches across the United States, 50% of them, by some estimations, just closed the doors or changed their name. They mm. moved away from Hillsong mm -hmm. because they don't want to be associated, including the one here in Atlanta, okay. right? They they said, we're no longer going to be Hillsong. We're changing our name. The preacher is taking yeah, it When in else. doubt, just rebrand. That, yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, girl, <laughs> I'm changing my name to Dan Wentz. <laughs> <laughs> used to be Carl Lentz. It's now Dan Wentz. You know what I'm saying? I'll be back at church. Don't you worry. Uh, so here's here's my point. When we start putting these people on pedestals, mm -hmm. right? When we start, Blue, honestly, Blue wants to get into the conversation. Honestly, Blue has some thoughts. Blue's in 33 of the 170 episodes that we've done. <laughs> hey, Blue, can you shut up while we're recording? Thanks. <laughs> no fuck you <laughs> and then she would go out there she just goes <laughs> she's so fat she's like <laughs> that goes on all night in my house oh lord so now so now <laughs> I swear to god I'm about to go out there I'm about to lose my shit <laughs> hey boo it's Carl it's Carl Lynch hey could you shut up for the lord I appreciate it thanks girl Thanks, girl. Could you chill out for the Lord? I'd appreciate it. <laughs> you know, there's doggy heaven, too. <laughs> you might go there soon. <laughs> so all these churches closed. Here's the point. You, when we put earthly things in un unearthly positions, this always fucking happens. Yeah, you want to know does. why? Because people are human. Now, diddling little boys, unfucking acceptable on any, in anybody's mind. I think anybody with a right mind on their shoulders will agree with me on that point. Sleeping with somebody that's not your wife, that's, I think, a much lesser offense. Uh, and I understand that, you know, people do think like shit happens. 
and Carl couldn't but control himself. But when you're himself. preaching one thing and doing the and other. And doing the other. It's so fucking hypocritical. Yeah, but this happens all the time. When are we going to learn our fucking lesson? Uh, Be spiritual, not religious. And if religion helps you, God bless you. Then keep on going to your yes, religion. You're going to your absolutely. corner church and you love it and you love the people. It's community. It's family to you. Right. Keep on doing your thing. But don't get caught up in all this bullshit. Don't get caught up in these crazy characters who beg for your money. Yeah, they're these char- charismatic you know, people that yes. get up there and just hypnotize people. And then they're flying around brand new 747s oh. that are macked out with, you know, uh, fucking Gucci logos. And you're still <laughs> two, trying to make rent. Two planes. Two planes. Yeah, yeah. two planes. Because I because one didn't do it. And you're still trying to make rent yeah. and cutting a hundred dollar check to these people every week. Don't do it. Don't get caught up in the bullshit. I love that show, The Righteous Gemstones. Just oh, yeah, yeah. It's so it good. It makes fun so of satirical. this entire thing. So... I'm just putting a cap on all this. I just want to update people on the Hillsong. The documentary is fascinating. I think I just told you most of the story, so I'm probably taking a lot of the bite out of the three-part miniseries, but it's fascinating. Okay. Discovery Plus, it's one of the ones that I, I recommend that you watch, and it's well done, too. Okay. Because at first, you're like, oh, who fucking cares? So the preacher slept with somebody. Big deal. You know, happens all the time. But then it gets a little deeper, and you're like, oh, I see. There's it's a whole fucking it. thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, before we let everybody go... I wanted to end on a funny note since I knew this was going to be a little bit more serious. I didn't know Carl was going to show up. I thought it was going to be more serious. You want to hear a drunk preacher? Yes. Just a drunk ass preacher. Yes, please. Just a man who was drunk who just decided to get up there and sing to the Lord. Praise. This is where Carl Lentz is going to be in five years from now. This is the, this is the church Carl Lentz is currently at. You ready? Okay. This is what I call drunk preacher. Uh, thanks to Whack Jobs for Jesus uh, for the video. Here we go. <laughs> He's been dipping into the wine. Oh, Jesus. Oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hoi, 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 hoi. Hoi, 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 hoi. Jesus. Arn. Arn. Do you remember Arn? Arn. <laughs> 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 That's the nudist, folks. The American Association Arn. of Recreational Nudeness. I don't Arn. know. Arn. <laughs> Hey, girl. I was wondering if you wanted to go to Arn with me tomorrow night. Since I don't have a job anymore, I figured you've got some free time on your hands. What's up, girl? <laughs> you want to go to Arn with me? <laughs> Thanks, Carl. That nudist called me. That was hilarious. We were calling him by the wrong name. <laughs> yeah, it was Arn. We kept on saying Arn, and it was like Aaron or something. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> More shenanigans from TCB. <laughs> Oh yes, Lord. I'm learning a, a quick prayer. I'll teach it to all you really quickly. Okie dokie, Lord. <laughs> Okie dokie, Lord. Here comes that Jack Daniels back up the other way. Okie dokie. <laughs> I can feel the Lord in my gut. Oh no. I can feel the Lord in my gullet. Does he throw up? No. Okie dokie. <laughs> Lord, I love your heavy, drunken glory. <laughs> Lord, I love it. Lord, thank you, Father, for more of a heavy, weighty, drunken glory in this house today. Look, this guy, this guy is like the dude you meet at the local at the bar. dive bar. Yeah. yeah, he's got the full-on '90s goatee. Oh yeah, that. I mean, it's long. Yeah, it's too. long. That's a Jerry it's not, Cantrell it's goatee. An actual goatee. Yeah, it's a like goatee. It just oh, it doesn't have, but it doesn't it, have the mustache. It just yeah. stops. It's at like the a corner of yeah, the lips. I don't know what you call that. You call that a Allison Chains. That's what I call that. <laughs> it's an Allison Chains. <laughs> it's a sound garden. That's what it is. Uh, and then he's got the pants that are riding oh, on yeah. the Victory V right there. Oh yeah, uh, they're about to fall down. Yeah, and that shirt hasn't been washed in a couple of weeks. <laughs> His wife won't let him back in the house. <laughs> he's just a mess. Yeah. Favorite little bit of you, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. is the bliss, is the joy, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, Isaiah 35. Is oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Isaiah 35. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Is he calling aliens? I don't know. He's, he's having a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Calling all humans. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We watched a video. We know how to communicate with the humans. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> so silly. You will be overtaken by... That means taken over by joy. That means possessed by joy. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, 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 yeah. oh my goodness. Does he have black nails? Thank you, Lord. No, I oh. think that's just uh, a shower. Okay. The Lord, the, uh, I think that's just a high-quality <laughs> studio TV. <laughs> I thought he was really trying to be cool no, with the oy, black oy. nails. No, oy, oy, oy. That's the sound garden. Aye, 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 aye. A teaching gift. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I now have a, a good gift of uh, getting struck mute in the middle of a service. <laughs> One of those few guest speakers who you invite in and then you may not be able to speak. Is he a guest speaker? Yeah. <laughs> That's even funnier. Well, if hey, like. Bob, I really like what Joe's doing up there. Sign him up again. <laughs> He's holding his stomach like he just had a big steak dinner. He's about yes. to fart. <laughs> That's how I hold my stomach after Thanksgiving. I'm like, ah. <laughs> or Taco do. Bell. Oh, yeah. ah. oing, oing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Well, today... Um, just invite, we just thank you, Lord. The, the, we have these little fat fryer tuck bartender angels that travel around with us. And they wheel in the barrels from heaven. What? Some healing angels that come. But let me tell you, you see this, fat yeah, bartenders? This guy has such a guilty conscience. He can't stop talking about alcohol. He's like, I'm so drunk with your glory. The fat little elf bartenders rolling free bottles of Jack Daniels behind the pew. The Lord's blood. <laughs> yeah. The Lord's blood. Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> These little fat fryer tucks, they start yanking on your arms. You better watch out. Fat you know, we fryers. need a little help around here. I, I think it's okay to talk about the angels in the church. Amen? Yoing, yoing, yoing. Help. We need somebody. Help. I mean, if we think we can get along, oh, just, let's just focus on Jesus. Don't talk about the angels. <laughs> Bring it back so, to Jesus. Yeah, bring it back to Jesus. Where everything goes back. To In Jesus. his mind, Joe, you're killing it. <laughs> you're right. killing it. They don't know anything. It's the best sermon you've ever given. Exactly. You're the next lens. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is. Just on Jesus, don't talk about human beings or animals or any other creature the Lord's created. <laughs> I think maybe we need to learn a little bit more about the spirit. Right? <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. Oh, yo, yo. I love this, this guy. guy. He, oh, this is like God. watching. Who uh, is this? I don't know. This is like uh, me 15 years yeah. ago at your house on a right. Saturday afternoon. Oh, yeah. oing, oing. <laughs> All right. Don't talk about her. Don't, don't call her. Don't call that girl. Right. Oing, oing, oing. Oh, thank you, Lord. Whoa. Lord, I want to do it your way. I want to do it the highway. I want to do it the right way. I want to. I want it to get done. Oing, oing. <laughs> oing, oing. Yeah. And look, that woman in the front is like, yeah, oh, speak it. Praise preach. Jesus. Preach. Yeah, preach. <laughs> He's our Savior. <laughs> when do they sing the ocean song? Excuse me, question. Is this the church where they sing oceans? No. <laughs> oing, oing, oing. <laughs> uh, people will believe anything. Yeah. Teresa Caputo, just wanna... drunken preacher. <laughs> So all I have to say, I mean, I like miracles. <laughs> we were in uh, we were in Cleveland, Ohio. A lady's plastic eye, glass eye. I don't know, ar- artificial eye. She began to see through it. We were standing. <laughs> 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 she began to see through her glass eye, glass or plastic, whatever glass, plastic. it was. <laughs> We're in Cleveland, some chick with fake tits. I was able to feel them after a couple of glasses of God's love. Oh, you're going. Glass eye, be able to see through it. Oh my God. Please. If you still have one good eye, it's not a miracle. In California, yeah. a guy wouldn't, I mean, we see deaf ears open up all the time, but this guy with no hole in his ear started to hear, right? And he still didn't have a hole in his ear. <laughs> He heard, but no hole. The hole didn't grow. He just got his hearing. Hearing with no parts. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I'm just going to tell you. He's just throwing story. out. He, yeah, he's just like <laughs> random. He sounds yeah, like me. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's like that's what's out of the commercial break. <laughs> yeah, no facts. One time I had sex with a sales stripper. <laughs> no, no facts, facts needed. No. Nope. <laughs> they just believe him. Just, yeah, yeah. Everybody at the front this row. This happened. Yeah. It was in Cleveland, though. <laughs> Cleveland. Wasn't here. Cleveland. <laughs> Wasn't here. <laughs> uh, just a couple weeks ago. I was, uh, you know, how many of you guys know Je- have heard Jeff's bilocation story where he showed up two places at once? Right? The way that that bi-location. video cut out, it sounded like bilocation story where Jeff shit once, two places. <laughs> Let's go back to that. I want you to hear how that cut out just a little bit and how it sounded like it was Jeff shit. Ready? Here we go. Okay. Listen to this again. 
I could tell you guys a few stories. It's a wet your appetite. Uh, just a couple wet weeks ago. Wet your appetite. I was, uh, you know, how many of you guys know Jeff, have heard Jeff's bilocation story where he shit up two places at once? <laughs> <Right? laughs> you know, sh- sh- shit up two places at once. show up more than one place at a time. Like, you show up, two of you, two Johnnies, two Jeffs, right? So we've been pressing in for this for a while. Lord, we want to bilocate, revel day. We want to buy. I want to buy. Bi- I want to bifurcate. I want to buy low, sell high. I want to buy at lows. I want to. <laughs> Can I start with the bilocation yeah. program? Sale at Home Depot. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> Black Friday, Green Tuesday. Not even sure. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> this is what my boner sounds like in the morning. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> That's the Lord. Uh, that's the Lord. That's Amen. spirit running through me. That's spirit. <laughs> Spirit's giving me a boner. That means I got a boner. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> In heaven, just give it all to me. I want everything, Lord God. I want everything from it. Just pour it out. Dump it on, you know, I want it. And so, so <laughs> yeah, wow. for, this for a while, I showed up in Ireland, although I was in Georgia. This just happened a few weeks. Happened actually on my birthday in August. <laughs> <laughs> just over to your neighbor. This guy you needs find- mental health. Oh this guy needs mental health. I have it on my birthday. Guy, I showed yeah. up in Ireland, and, and the Lord made me drink uh, all I, the Guinness I, that I was, was there. Yeah. That's how it <laughs> happens, Chrissy. That's what happens. It just happened to me on my birthday. Hey, girl. It's speaking of your birthday. It's <laughs> speaking of your birthday. What you doing? What you doing next Tuesday? Let's go to Ireland. Let's go to Ireland, girl. <laughs> Send me this video. Do me a favor. Don't give it to anybody else except for the New York Post. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. It's me, Carl. Big Carl, little Carl. Ow. (laughs) (laughs) Do that. (laughs) Ow. (laughs) (laughs) Love you, girl. Love you, girl. Oh, my God. Fails, never fails. Every single time we talk about a preacher on this show, they're doing whatever they're telling everybody else not to do. Every single fucking time. (laughs) Every time. Drunk with your love. Drunk with your love, Lord. Drunk with your love. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. what else can I say? It was a good day back. It was a good day back. Cheers. Thanks, Christy. Appreciate it. Yes. Good to be back. Good to be back. Good to have it. Everything is right with the world. Great to be back. Yes. Christy and I are going to be at PodFest the last weekend yes, in May. We May. Go to PodFest.com. Go to PodFest.com. If you want free tickets, I'm going to link it in the show notes. If you're interested in the podcast industry whatsoever, you're a casual observer, you want to get into it, you are into it, go to PodFest. You can see Chrissy and I are going to be there all day on Friday, and we're going to be doing a live episode of The Commercial Break as a presentation, which is going to be a ton of fun. Special guests, lots more to happen at PodFest, the good people over at PodFest. So that's a live appearance that we're making. That if you'd like to Down join Orlando. us, yeah, please do. Otherwise, you'll have to see us at our next 33 P P Pastor <laughs> event. Yo, girl, what's up, girl? What's up, girl? <laughs> what's up, girl? Just look for me. V for victory. <laughs> My V is more like a, it's more like a B. <laughs> I got a B. <laughs> I look more like what was that guy's name in your in your video? Pullman. What was Plumley. his name? Plumley. I'm more like a Plumley. <laughs> I got more of a Plumley figure than a Lens figure. I got a rolling B all the way down to glory. There oh, you go. Yeah. All right. Oh, roll it on in. Amen, Here, brother. Yeah, amen, brother. Here's what you do. You go to tcbpodcast.com. More information about Chrissy and I. All the show notes, all the audio, all the video. Now full episodes and clips every single day of the week. You can go to youtube.com slash the commercial break to check that out at the commercial break on Instagram, 661. Best, the number two, yo. That's 661 237 8296. Okay, that's okay. it. That's all I can do. I love you. I love you, Brian. Best to you. <laughs> I love you, boy. Best to you. <laughs> best to you. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, we always say, we do say, we must say, bye. bye.